Hi, I'm Nancy Chu, and today we're going inside this incredible designer home. We pass through these heavy steel decorator doors and enter the atrium, the heart of this colorful home. Here is an awesome reflecting pool with bronze deer. But I really want to lead you into the formal living room, which we're going to transform into an even more wonderful space with wallpaper, but not the kind you're probably thinking of. Welcome to this beautiful contemporary home. It was a featured parade home a few years ago. This is our homeowner, Peggy. Hi, Nancy. Hi, Peggy. I love what you've done to this house since the parade. Thank you very much. We love this home because it is so open and bright. I was hoping today you could help me with this living room over here. With all the colors in it, the walls still seem to need something. Peggy, I agree. The walls do lack a little punch in view of all the other dramatic colors that you have in here. So what do you think about making some hand-painted wallpaper for this room? Oh, Nancy, I think that's a great idea. What I can do is create a paper that has a background of the violet, and then we can pull out accents in the paper with the fuchsia, and of course some gold accents to work with this frame, and maybe a little kiss of red. Sound neat? Sounds oh, I'm wonderful. excited. We need to get started, so we have to get all the furniture out of this room, put a drop down on the pretty carpet, and so guys, bring the muscles in here, let's get the furniture out, let's get out of their way. Okay, the canvas is just about clean, which means we can fill it in again as it's never been filled in before. Before we begin, we need to talk about the items we'll need to make the wallpaper. We'll begin by using a gallon bucket. We'll put water in here and colors, and this will be the color that all of the papers go through and give you that wonderful background violet. Then all the wonderful, vibrant reds and purples and golds that Peggy and I discussed will be mixed up in these small styrofoam bowls. Our colors will be fluid acrylics, and I have purple and red and fuchsia and black. And then also add the iridescent and interference colors, and this is what's going to give us that surprising movement and sparkle of iridescence. Clean up with this small stuff is really easy, because at the end of the day, you throw it away. It goes away easily. Now, we need to make a lot of paper for Peggy, and the best thing to do with a project like this is to have a friend. This is my friend, Tom Pearson. He does interiors, but on a different scale. He does interiors for department stores. Well, what have you gotten me into today, Nancy? Well, I promise you, Tom, this project is going to be a lot of fun. Well, I saw the great colors that you've picked, and I see all this paper. We're not going to use all this paper on one project, though, are we? Well, it's a thought. However, what we'll do first is experiment with some of these papers to determine which paper is the perfect one for Peggy. Um, I did some test samples already, and I ended up creating colors, sort of a pale lavender, mm -hmm. you see. This is a sample. Just no drama. Right. Yeah. It's dull. Well, I was trying to be kind, but <laughs> I guess no more. <laughs> oh. Okay, bye. And, and then I tried the black paper. Mm -hmm. And this is a black craft paper. Again, it has a wonderful weight to it. I, I deepened the, the violets and the reds and added a lot more gold. But boy, oh boy, it's yeah. probably a little much. Yeah, a little Las Vegas. Uh, yeah. Velvet Elvis against this, wouldn't that be perfect? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Get well. That, yeah. <laughs> okay. Good, Joy. There he goes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, this is what I ended up with. And I'm really proud oh, of this. Oh, that's... That's beautiful. Isn't it wonderful? Is. This is actually the brown butcher paper that I used in the first trial. 
But I use those dark colors that I put on the black paper. And you can see now that we have a lot of drama, but it's not too much. We're getting sparkle and movement with the violets and the reds and the golds. Well, and I love how you feel all of the pieces that you put into the paper. It's just so tactile. Oh, it's just this is wonderful. dynamite. Yeah, I think this is perfect for Peggy. Now don't go away because we're going to mix colors and start to make paper. Okay, Tom, I have already started two colors there. Why don't you dilute that down just a little bit, and we're going to make the third color. Tom already has gold and red, and we need to make the third color for the decorative dips. The third color was, of course, the purple, and we're going to begin by squirting a little of this fluid acrylic purple in the bottom of the bowl. Then I'm going to add interference violet. Excuse me. Nancy, what is interference? It's one of my favorite things in the whole world of painting. Look inside that jar. Looks pretty much white. It looks white, but what happens is the little mica particles in the color dry to reflect. Violet. That's right. Isn't that wonderful? That's great. What this interference does to the red, which you have over there, and the gold, we have interference gold in that, just pops that iridescent. Look at this. Isn't that incredible? That's great. The interference colors create drama, and of course, this is what we want in Peggy's paper. So you have interference red in the red, also interference gold in the gold. So if you can put some water in that, stir it up really well, we're going to begin with the main dip. And of course, the main dip is now made in our gallon bucket. I have two-thirds of the bucket filled with water. I'm going to add some black, because the darker the background that we have for these interference colors, the more dramatic the paper. So we'll begin by squirting this black into the bucket. And then, of course, Peggy's papers need to be a little bit on the violet side to work with her carpet. We're going to add some violet in here. And, of course, interference violet. And pop that in, and then we mix it up. Okay, Nancy, I'm going to be a pest one more time. No, not you. <laughs> What's with the gravy whip? Mother said that when I make gravy, I should use a gravy whip. Now, you know I don't cook. So I took the gravy whip from the kitchen, and I brought it to the studio, and I use it to help lift all these heavy colorants that sink to the bottom of the bucket. And as I stir them, it suspends them into the fluid. We're ready to go. We're gonna go make wallpaper. Let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> 